How's it going everybody? Just wanted to do a quick update video on my uh, 300 Blackout uh, pistol upper build. Uh, I just The only thing I, I've, I've got new now for this uh, upper is I finally got some a set of sights for it. Uh, I finally, I just went and got the uh, the Magpul Embus sights and got them dialed in a while back at about 100 yards and it's it's hitting real good now at 100 so I'm real happy. Uh, didn't, I'm not going to mess with no optic or anything or anything like that or red dot anytime soon you know right now I'm just gonna keep with the iron sights you know I'm real happy on you know how well I was able to hit in 100 yards with the irons with this uh, this pistol uh, other than that everything else pretty much the same uh, you know nothing's major really changed other than just the sights you know still got the uh, the uh, SB47 uh, brace for it uh, still gonna I, that's the other next thing major is Need to get the uh, the actual sig sig arm brace for the AR-15s, and so I can uh, have an actual real arm brace for the AR, because the uh, SB-47 brace is actually bigger in diameter, so it, it kind of it's real sloppy on there. Uh, so other than that, that's the only real update on on the the, the firearm itself is uh, the sights. You know, I'm real happy with these sights. You know, they're not for for what it is and for the distance I'm using this gun. I don't need uh, you know. A hundred dollars just for one site type deal. So, uh, and other than that, that's it. You know, real happy with them. They, they work real well for being polymer and uh, and everything. Of course, Magpul stuff's always good. And of course, I got it on the handguard free float, so it's not going to have to worry about anything melting. So, uh, but anyways, that's the update on that. And I kind of wanted to do a little uh, video as far as. Uh, a warning or uh, video or hopefully to help somebody out if you're just getting into 300 blackout or thinking about buying an upper or building one <clears throat> or just buying a complete 300 rifle or pistol uh, or if you already have one and you're thinking about getting into reloading uh, for the caliber uh, definitely one thing I, I, I want to talk about is do just it's this is the caliber that's given me the most out of everything I've reloaded. This has given me the biggest uh, challenge, I would guess. Uh, cur uh, currently, I'm doing like nine calibers I'm reloading for. Two of them are being the 300, or two of them are being rifles, I and mean, it's 223 and 300 blackout. Uh, that's all I'm doing so far, and then the rest are just all my pistol calibers, <clears throat> uh, most of them at least. Uh, but out of all nine total calibers this this is the only caliber that's given me the most uh, trouble and difficulty uh, and what the problem was is with the chambering into the uh, into the upper uh, basically uh, uh, almost all of them would bar barely as they're trying to come into the chamber they would barely uh, go in all the way so there'd be like a little gap to where you, you could see the bolts not fully uh, chambered forward almost to where you'd have to hit the Ford assist and uh, what I ended up finding out <clears throat> I called I contacted Lee because most of my dies or actually all of them pretty much except for these ones now are Lee I, I'm real happy with Lee's dies and everything <clears throat> excuse me uh, but what I found out is that I guess after contacting Lee about this issue uh, I guess their dies are designed to put less strain on uh, wear and tear on the brass basically and uh, make it so you don't you know doesn't degard uh, brass life as much well he asked if I was the gentleman asked if I was using factory 300 blackout brass or if I was doing basically converting uh, 223 or 556 over and obviously you know I, I am and uh, I'm converting it over and well he said that their dies since they're designed not to uh, you know put as much wear and tear they're uh, basically they're not putting them into spec uh, and he says what you need is a set of small base dies and of course I asked them if Lee makes them and they don't so uh, the only one I didn't really look into it but the only uh, small base dies I knew that uh, that a local store actually had it uh, like in stock was a set of RB RCBS dies so uh, unfortunately I had to buy two sets of dies to find out this or you know at least one set to find out that that set, you know, isn't any good for me, you know, for converting this brass over. So, unfortunately, I had to buy two sets of dies just to reload this caliber, uh, which kind of stinks, but oh well. 
Uh, so that's why hopefully this will help somebody else out. So if you're getting ready to reload this caliber uh, and you're going to use like I'm doing 223 brass or 556 brass, uh, definitely just get a set of small base dies to transform that brass over to 300 blackout. And then I haven't tried it yet, but then you may, after it's formed, uh, you may be able to, down the road after you fire it and then pick it up and then reload it again, you may be able to use like you know your regular Lee or something uh, regular uh, full length sizer die but like I said I haven't uh, tried that out yet you know I'm just kinda you know just trying rounds out and seeing how they're gonna work uh, so what the problem was when I ended up finding another video is uh, right in here this portion where the shoulder is the, on the neck it would actually be would using the lead eyes when I would try it out this would mic a little bit bigger and then after I do that I would take it to the, the RCBS uh, small base die and then resize it again right after I did it with the Lee and it would actually be uh, you know a smaller diameter so uh, so basically I guess that's the problem is that the Lees are not smashing it in enough or informing it enough to be able to chamber and they're just with the Lee ones they're just a little bit too fat so when they're trying to chamber into the, uh, into the chamber it would basically hang up and stick so so just a warning uh, get small base dies and do that first to transform your brass over and uh, hopefully you should be good then you know I don't know if any other manufacturers like Dillon or uh, Horner D dies if they they do that I'm not sure that's just for Lee dies from what I was told uh, so yeah hopefully that'll save you some time and some headache uh, so far the ones that I did do with the RCBS dies and formed uh, with those small base dies they they actually work really well so they chambered pretty pretty nicely and was easy to strap for the most part so I think I might have solved the issue uh, so that's that uh, I'm just using a in case anybody wants to know, uh, uh, Sierra Match King, or Pro or Pro Hunter, I believe it is, uh, bullet, 150 grains, so. Other than that, with uh, 15.8 grains of uh, Winchester 296, it's a little on a warmer side. I may uh, drop the grainage down a little bit, I'm not sure. I still need to try these out and see how, you know, I like the accuracy with them, but uh, other than that, that's it. So yeah, uh, hopefully that might help somebody out. Uh, you know, definitely, this you know, was the most expensive uh, caliber to start reloading to get into so far just because I had to buy two sets of dies. Uh, I still need to get a uh, 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 gauge. I need to get a gauge so I can uh, gauge all my uh, brass and make sure everything's going to headspace good and everything and chamber fine. So, still haven't got one yet, but that's hopefully I'll get one soon. But other than that, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.